Ogilvy Colliery, South Wales, last Friday evening. The afternoon shift comes up after its seven and a quarter hours underground. Thirteen of these men won't be going down again. They've decided to leave the pits. Thirteen out of 25,000 miners who'll be lost to the coal industry this year. My father, who was apparently a great miner, uh, is in the days before mechanization and so on, uh, when you've got the great seam, there's a, there's a great seam, a famous seam, a, a world famous one, which I believe is called the Great Atlantic Fault. And it starts in uh, northern Spain, in the Basque country. And it goes under the Bay of Biscay, and it comes up in South Wales, and it goes under the Atlantic, and comes up in Pennsylvania. So that if you took a Basque miner, or a Welsh miner, or a Pennsylvania miner, and if you could blindfold them and transport them, and they know the, the coal face the minute they saw it. It's, it. I believe it's four feet six inches. And my father used to talk about it as some men will talk about women, talk about the beauty of this coal face. And my brothers would tell me stories about my father um, who would look at the seam. My father's a very short man, an ideal height for a man. He was about five feet three or four. Very, very powerful, of course. And he would look at the, uh, at the seam of coal and he would, as to uh, almost surgically make a mark on it and then ask his boy, every miner has a boy who works for him, and he would say, give me the number two mandrel, that's a half-headed pick. <coughs> and then, having stared at this gorgeous display of black shining ribbon of coal, he would then hit it with one enormous blow. And if he hit it right, something like 20 tons of coal would fall out from the coal face. Really? So that it was thrilling, it was exciting. And indeed, that's why I think when you perhaps think of me as being born uh, with a silver spoon and so on, uh, miners uh, believe themselves, or believed themselves anyway, to be the, uh, the uh, aristocrats of the working class. They felt superior to all other kinds of manual laborers. They were skilled workers. That cold face was a, was a magical creature. Mining traditions are strong in South Wales. It may be a dirty and dangerous job, but a miner doesn't decide lightly to give it up. Terry Morris left the mines 10 days ago after 27 years. He was one of last week's statistics. Why did he decide to leave? Well, I was doing a man's job for boys' money. As simple as that. And uh, watching my brother die at 47 years of age, five weeks ago, of pneumoconiosis, he finally made my mind up for me to get out of the industry completely. What do you mean? Well, the way he died, uh, we all knew that Sid had 80% dust, dust we call it, like, isn't it? But I never really had an, an inkling of the way that man would die. It took him a week to die. He was using four bottles of oxygen a day. We couldn't even take the mask off his face to give him a tablet to ease the pain in his chest. And uh, I thought I'll, I'll do my best to get up to him to see now. Because every time I went on the colliery, I was, my legs were going wobbly. And uh, watching the men coming up and down the pit, no win. Seeing the young boys going down the pit, no win full well that they don't really know what's facing them. To be honest, when I first started the pit in the 80s, I worked with my dad down the pit. And my dad before me worked with my granddad down the pit, and my granddad worked with his dad down the pit. And that went back over 150 years. So enshrined, if you like, in this constituency, we've got that deep-rooted, yep. that, that mining culture where if you're not from this area, you don't really understand about working down the pit, about how difficult it is, about that underground community you've got, because there is an underground community, and above ground there's that, uh, there's that village community, if you like, that pit village community, and that was sort of taken away from us overnight. My father was a miner, my brother was a miner, I was a miner, but uh, no, I, uh, I don't think that uh, miners today are proud of being miners because they know they're one of the lowest paid in the country. Of course there are. There are industries which are getting less than the miners, but they're not in the, working in the same conditions as a miner. There's no chance of them getting killed, like a miner. A miner could go down the pit today. His wife could be a widow tomorrow morning. There's no chance of contacting pneumoconiosis if you're on a bloody milk ground 
or if you work on the factory floor. But when she go down there and work in that dust, God only knows what your lungs will be like in a few time, your few years time. I want my grandchildren to go to university and go and have careers elsewhere like uh, my daughter has. She's a geological engineer, I want them to go down that route. But I won't be, I won't be upset if they've gone mining. Because it's a fantastic way of life. Uh, it's, it's a brotherhood. It's a cliche, I know, but it is a brotherhood. And these people that you work with have got your back all the time. And always. I know it's dangerous, but people are watching your back all the time. Uh, and people are always watching out for you. So I'd go back in a heartbeat. I'd go back tomorrow. We all would. We all would. Everybody's ambition, every little boy's ambition in, in my valley was to become a miner. Because uh, there was the arrogant strut of the lords of the cold face. They had these uh, muscular buttocks and the bow, bow legs and they walked with a kind of arrogance and everybody wanted to be like a miner. They wanted to stand on street corners and look at uh, the posh people pass with, uh, with hostile eyes and uh, insult the girls from the the doctor's daughter, the lawyer's daughter, the preacher's daughter, as they passed and insult them with these cold, low looks because they were the kings of the underworld. They, they look down on people from below, in a sense, didn't in, they? Absolutely. You are clever. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you it's dirty, dark, and 11 kilometers from fresh air. This is the last shift in the last of Britain's deep coal mines. The last lump of coal will go into a museum, but so will an entire tradition. You said we miners, but you've left the industry. Yes, but once a miner, always a miner. I'll always be a miner at that. And I'll always be sympathetic towards the miners.